Hello, United States family. The primaries are over. I hope you all considered the choices that you made as they do affect every aspect of our communities and our planet. The very choices that we make vibrate across time and space. So thank you to those who participated in making your voices heard as the battle for equality, social justice, and peace requires participation. In this video, I will touch on a few topics of importance for this election season. While you watch this video, I want you to think about the problems that we are currently facing in our society and what you and we can do to make it better. This is also something that you should be keeping in mind for those who you will be electing to represent your community, your nation, your future, and the future of all life on our planet. We're going to start with education, one of my favorites, and I want you to imagine what a world of uneducated people looks like. The pollution, the greed, the disease, inequality, poverty, herd mentality, and scores of snowflakes looking for every opportunity to not be responsible for their actions. Yes, we are in that world. It shouldn't be hard to imagine. Americans are especially known for their blissful stupor, and despite our advanced educational system, we are dangerously uneducated as a people. Having a degree doesn't mean that you understand how to apply the things that you learned or that you understand your field of study at all. Education won't guarantee you a job or guarantee that you're a decent human being that will use your knowledge to better our world. Keep in mind, a less educated people are more easy to control and can be more impulsive and volatile. This societal stupor and level of misinformation is the biggest reason why people are easily manipulated, which is only a bad thing when the authority figure or influencer is leading with a service to self mentality instead of a service to others. We are a nation of misinformed people and the majority think they got it all right when in fact they don't, but they lead their lives and values based on these lives. Many will spread these lies and die thinking that they had it right the whole time. Meanwhile, their ignorance has many negative impacts on our world during and after their existence. It is much harder cleaning up after a mess than preventing it in the first place. Knowledge is power and with power comes responsibility and that emotional maturity is what most Americans lack. I think that education, particularly in the fields of psychology and nonviolence, should be a priority when it comes to basic education. Because of our poor educational system, Americans are so stunted intellectually, which holds back our progress as a society. For whatever educational system that we end up having in the future as it relates to government and economics, higher education, if not free, should be easily affordable by all. That's my stance on that, and as a side note, about student debt, education is priceless, and the future of our world depends on the next generations to make the world a better place. Education is our salvation, science is our salvation, and it prevents us from descending into another dark age where superstitions control our daily activities, coloring our fears with fantasies to comfort us from the unknown. Debt is a tool that traps people into slavery and unwarranted servitude. Teachers and staff should of course be generously compensated for their contribution to knowledge and their service to our communities. I encourage everyone to achieve higher education and not pay back your student debt crash the system. The system that tries to enslave us. The system that cherry picks information that we are fed. Education should be free or at least affordable. Student debt should be eliminated. Teachers should be paid well and fairly for their efforts. And educational institutions should be equally available to all and have the funds and support that they need to accommodate the education of the people. Okay, so there's my short thoughts on education. Now on to healthcare. Healthcare is a tricky subject. Just like education, it has become a system built on selfish gains, capitalism, and social control. Teach them only a little bit of the truth so that they never become empowered to be self-reliant and independent. A great way to keep the people under your control is to make sure that they are constantly fighting for their life. Generations of brainwashing, poor dietary habits into the minds of the people has the people sick and dying, addicted to the words of doctors and fictitious personalities, making the average person believe that the idea the idea of perfect health is just always out of reach, and that we must depend on the pharmaceutical industry and our healthcare providers and doctors to keep us alive, keep us from dying. Again, this is connected to poor education. If the people were educated on the most up-to-date information that we have about health and diet, we would have a society less addicted to prescription drugs, less people 
dying and suffering from disease, less people suffering from petty colds and flus, and less children being born with chronic illnesses and diseases. And in its place, we would have a higher quality of life for all. It also makes it difficult to lead a healthy life when healthy food is neither available or affordable. Natural, unadulterated, organic produce should be the easiest to obtain, and yet here in America, it is more expensive than the pesticide sprayed, chemically contaminated, and genetically altered produce that is common in our local grocery stores. Even as the population of those who are able to afford organic produce is increasing, the price of organic produce is still more than the conventional produce. The United States has to import organic produce from other countries because it cannot meet the consumer demand for it in the US. People are becoming more educated and health conscious, and they are demanding more and more organic produce. I mention food because food has the greatest impact on our health and the health of the next generations. Spraying chemicals over our crop fields contaminate our drinking water. It is inhaled by the people, causing serious health effects. So where am I at with healthcare? Well, I think healthcare should be free for all, or once again, just like education, it should be easily affordable. No one should ever be in debt for this basic need. No one should ever have to struggle or choose between this basic need and another. Healthcare should be easily accessible and provided for all. One of our priorities as a society should be to increase the quality of health for the people. In addition, adding to the educational system, basic nutrition should also be included in basic education and all the knowledge and resources that we have up till now about how red meat is carcinogenic, which increases the risk of cancer and heart disease, the leading causes of death in the United States, the truth about a healthy vegan diet and how it reduces the risk of cancer and heart disease, all of this should be common knowledge. I pray for the liberation of the people from ignorance and generations of propaganda and social control because everyone deserves to live a healthy, happy and prosperous life. I believe in free or easily affordable healthcare for all. The transition to chemical-free agriculture and the ease of availability for healthy food for all. Now on to another health and safety concern drug use, addiction, and crime. The government is one of the biggest drug dealers in the world. Billionaires, cartels, big pharma, who keep you hooked on this or that, locked in a cycle of ignorance and repetitive behaviors that disempower you. I admit that drug abuse and addiction is not my area of expertise. And being someone who's never been a drug user, including rarely using pharmaceuticals, it's really hard for me to comment on the subject as I lack experience. But if what I've learned has any value, abolition and harsh punishment is not going to stop drug use or drug traffickers. It's not going to stop addiction and it's not going to stop the movement of drugs in our communities. If you want to be a part of the drug war conversation, you have to understand why people do drugs in the first place. I'll put links in the bio for education, but if anyone has better resources, please leave it in the comments. I'll add it to the bio. It's really important that you are educated in this subject with compassion for the people that are struggling from addiction in order for you to bring value to the conversation. Nobody wants wants to be addicted to drugs, to be dependent on a substance that harms you. So don't be so quick to condemn those who are struggling with addiction. People want drugs. We live in a fucked up society. We are surrounded by violence, surrounded by injustice, by poverty, by abuse. How logical is it to punish people for trying to cope? Show them compassion, that a better world is possible, and make better options and resources available to them. The worst thing that we can do is settle on a quick fix. This is not a quick fix situation, and there may not be a one-size-fits-all solution. For your homework, I want you to find a country that has been addressing the war on drugs and has had success with it. Put it in the comments. Uneducated and heartless politicians want to punish people for their addictions when they should be helping them. Once again, to address addiction, you have to understand the origin of addiction. These are the reoccurring themes in my video. There is no one-size-fits-all solution, and we have to stop addressing the symptoms. We need to focus on the origin. Some politicians think that they can just use force to address drug problems in our country, but drug traffickers are working on the inside. They have silent armies, they have 
powerful influences. We need to address this from multiple angles, but abolition is not the answer. Punishment and violence is not the answer. Now we understand that cannabis is a medicine, not a drug. And what has happened to the cannabis market? This is just my terrible two cents, but maybe we can offer drugs to addicts cheaper than the competitors and make them go out of business, whilst focusing on helping addicts recover. We can charge independent suppliers a tax which can go towards testing the products and building facilities where people can safely partake as well as get resources on how to treat their addiction. I know it's weird, but we live in a capitalist society built on a supply and demand system where there's profit, there's profiteers. And what happens when you add competitors into the market? Price goes down, it's more available, and you have less and less drug traffickers because now they need to find something else to do because they can't just keep competing in this oversaturated industry. We need to decriminalize drugs and create safe spaces for drug use and facilities for addiction recovery. Again, this is not my area of expertise. Resources that I find will be in the bio. Okay, so recap, this is what I want you to take away from this. To address drug issues in our communities, we have to understand the origin of drug addiction. We have to understand the stakeholders, understand capitalism. I hope that that was clear in my presentation. It is my belief that if we want to make a positive difference when it comes to the war on drugs, we have to invest more in human services, education, resources, and accommodations for communities that are heavily impacted and targeted by the drug war. Next is uneven power dynamics. I really don't know what to call this. Big businesses are a huge problem. We have big pharma, the tobacco industry, animal ag industry, which all poison the land and the people. They act like they are above the law, avoiding taxes, not taking accountability for the damages that they cause. The fossil fuel empire and the hush up of all the inventions that could wipe it off the face of the earth. That could bring us sustainable energy and help the planet recover from its toxic presence. This is a silent war that benefits big businesses and cripples individual sovereignty. Billionaires and big business, often one and the same, manipulate legislation in their favor. They live like gods, using the people as social political science experiments, like they're playing the sims. By exercising their status and skills, they use money to influence the people, taking advantage of the lack people have in their lives. Lack of knowledge and education, lack of money, lack of self-sufficiency, lack of food availability, lack of community support, etc. There must be tighter, cleaner systems in place to prevent the uneven power dynamics that billionaires and powerful industries bring to nations. I don't know if I have the answer for that, but it's something that I hope that you'll think about. Put it in the comments. We need leaders that support a fair world for all, where everyone has their basic needs met without struggle, accessible and affordable, clean food, clean water, power, shelter, education, healthcare, and human services. These are the things that we collectively as a nation should not be on the fence about, but share as a common foundation for our unity. Please consider wisely and with emotional maturity and discretion the leaders that represent your communities, this nation of much diversity. I encourage people to educate themselves on social justice issues and their origins thereof. Addressing the symptom does nothing to address the root cause. That goes for all the important issues that we are facing today as a nation. Pick something and level up your knowledge on it. I've put links in the bio. Be of value to your community and educate yourself. Share what you learn. There are so many issues in our world that need to be addressed and talked about and I have barely skimmed the surface. Learn to have emotionally intelligent conversations with your peers so that we as a community can come together and be productive and make some healthy progress in our society society, in our communities. It is up to us to be that change that we want to see in the world. I hope that you will consider discussing these topics with your friends, with your family, how they got started, how we can find solutions. That's all for now. Land back, grow your own food. Community is unity. Live long and prosper.